Good morning, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso, and I'm a non-sectarian Buddhist monk, teacher, and healer. In a nutshell, I'm here to tell you that the stories people give, the reasons people give, are not necessarily the reasons they have. Does that mean that people are deliberately lying to others? Sometimes. Always? No. Sometimes they're also lying to themselves. Del consciously? Sometimes. Always? No. Not always. Folks, to say that humanity is complex is an understatement. If you are hoping to persuade someone, anyone, don't ask them the reasons, because the more reasons they give, the deeper they will be entrenched in their opinion, even if it's destructive. They have to be, because if, if after giving five reasons why they absolutely can't do action A, they say, okay, I'll do action A, they're inferring that they were lying, or they're stupid, or they're simply weak-willed, and no one, no one, no one wants to do that. So don't go into story yourself if you wish to evolve and grow rapidly, and don't elicit other people's story. Consider the word why. If used judiciously and occasionally, it can be helpful. If used hypnotically, it can be helpful. But if overused in conversation, we'll just be slogging through our story and other people's story, denying ourselves and others the chance to grow. When you look at the great saints of every religion, regardless of gender, you'll see that they're very spontaneous and they're fast moving. You can't be spontaneous and fast moving if you're in story. It can happen. If you want to evolve, we have to be very, very, very mutable. Yeah. Consider, if you will, a young child. I think it's they call it the terrible twos when they learn how to say, No! <laughs> I'm not sure what age it is when they try to actively manipulate their parents. So at two, they're just trying to meet their parents' force with their own force, which is not very great. But at one point, they start to manipulate their parents. Eat broccoli. Why? It's good for you. Why? Because USDA tests have shown that why. They will always ask why. There was a, uh, a Stephen King made-for-television series. I think it was called Storm of the Century. And the killer, he would, after slaughtering people in ex extremely violent ways, he would write often in the victim's blood next to the body, Give me what I want, and I'll go away. And this, this villain actually had integrity. When they gave him what he wanted, he did go away. But here's the irony. Everyone lies. Every person lies. Every government institution lies. Even our own inner defense mechanisms lie. Our inner fears lie. Our inner resistance lies. And so often, institutions, people, ourselves, our inner resistance will say, I'm not going to do what you think I should do until you answer my question. Answer my question adequately, and I'll enthusiastically comply. Bullshit. It ain't going to happen, friends. The fact is, whether it's an institution, a person, an inner defense mechanism, Whatever it is, the only truthful thing is that it doesn't want it. And no matter how many hoops 
the institution, the person, or the inner defense mechanism make you jump through, they'll still say, eh, I'm just not satisfied. Think back into the 1800s in America. Some people called it the Gilded Age. It was a time of profound corruption in government and in business, where horrible acts of exploitation led to, led to great wealth for the few. One of the brave men of that period was Upton Sinclair, who wrote the book he probably read in high school called The Jungle which um, revealed, exposed the horrible labor and health practices of the meatpacking industry in Chicago. Upton, Clincier, Upton Sinclair was enthusiastic to change the world around him. Not only did he write, but he also ran for office. And it was in his personal experience that led him to conclude that it's difficult to get a man to believe something when his paycheck depends on him not understanding it at all. So is it any surprise that when dealing with an institution, a person, or inner defense mechanism, that if it doesn't want to do something, you're going to have difficulty convincing it otherwise? Ask a successful salesman. Get him off the sales floor. Buy him lunch. After the third Pellegrino, or the second Pellegrino, after his tie's been loosened, I'll tell you the truth, that he who asks the questions is attempting to control the conversation. Well, the inference is that he who answers the questions is relinquishing control of the conversation. If someone, you know, if, if we're trying to guide someone or guide ourselves into making the right decision, if we start down the path of asking pseudo, of answering the pseudo intellectual questions put to us by our own defense mechanisms or by those we're trying to help, nine times out of ten, we'll be playing their game. Now, does, if this sounds adversarial, that would be because it is. <laughs> Whether we're working on helping another or working on helping ourselves, there's a lot of momentum, there's a lot of energy against that. I love the movie Memento. I guess it came out about 12 years ago. Um, there's a wonderful phrase, catchphrase, don't believe his lies. My story, my advice to you is don't buy anyone's story, not even your own. The what of what we choose and what we do and what we feel is a far more important than the why. In fact, it could be said, in fact, I'm saying it now, that the why leads to bondage, and the what has at least the potential to lead us to liberation, liberation from the tyranny of our impulses and the causes. We'll still have impulses, we'll still have emotions, we'll still have sensations, but if we're liberated, they will no longer be the boss of us. Liberation begins by declaring our rebellion against our story and the stories of others. Don't buy your own story. Don't buy others' story. And so here is the linchpin. If you're in a relationship, a friendship or a dating relationship, and you ask someone, please don't poke me in the eye, and they say, why? Their problem is not a lack of information, but a lack of love and respect and wisdom. If your reasonable requests are met with constant challenges and frequent lies, it may be time to schedule an appointment with a marriage counselor. Now, 
I assure you, Lama Jigme is not on a crusade to destroy marriages and see everyone have their day in divorce court. I want to see marriages work. I want to see friendships work. I like the phrase mutually nurturing. And to do that, we have to blast through the bullshit. If we are to become the men and women of wisdom and love that we were born to be, we cannot lie to ourselves and invite others to lie to us as well. Let's find clever, funny, courageous, sweet, and respectful ways to stay out of our own story and out of other stories as well. Well, that's the end of my video. If you have any questions or comments, or you just want to send me a cyber hug, then uh, use the link below to take you to one of my Facebook pages where you can do so. My The Tuesday series of weekly classes begins October 1st. So if you live in the greater Los Angeles area, you know, contact me again using my website or the Facebook and uh, make arrangements to attend. If you don't, contact me the same way, and then you can make arrangements to attend via Skype. Now, I'm teaching in someone's living room, so there's only so many people can fit. And Skype, there's only so many people can fit on that as well. So, <laughs> so you know, if, you, if you're interested, then take action quickly. May you and yours be healthy and happy Oh, money upon me. Bye-bye now.